Hello everyone, Chamantine here. So today I am showing you um, kind of a hack tip that I've uh, uh, come up with. So say you want to run uh, virtualization in your home lab. You've tried ESSI uh, from VMware and it's not installing on your equipment because either uh, it doesn't recognize, it doesn't like your SATA controller, which happens to a lot of people, um, and uh, uh, it's just not detecting a lot of things, and it won't install. So normally you'd be left with having to install something like Windows or a full-fledged operating system, and then installing something like VMware uh, or Microsoft Virtual PC or VirtualBox on top of the full-fledged operating system. Um, for the most part, that will do. But the thing is that you're, especially if you're running Windows, you're robbing yourself of like two gigs of RAM. Uh, and on top of that, the CPU resources and the other hardware resources that are taken up by that full installation of Windows. Or even Ubuntu or Debian, if you install with an entire GUI and everything like that, you're robbing yourself of hard drive space, of RAM, uh, capacity and stuff like that uh, for an operating system that you're not even using. So what uh, what I've done, or um, and I'm sure I'm not the first one to come up with this, but I, I thought I'd make a video, is why don't you install, because of how well built VirtualBox is, and I think VMware has the same features, the VirtualBox uh, desktop virtualization comes with a command line interface that you can use. So I I propose what you can do is you can install Debian, which, you know, here are the system requirements. So no desktop, okay? So, you know, it takes up to 512 megs of RAM, and they require around 2 gigabytes of hard drive space versus 10 gigabytes of hard drive space and 1 gig of RAM. And that's conservative because we all know, especially with GUIs, the, um, there's little knickknacks and stuff that run. Okay, so what I've done in in a in a case where uh, my machine ESSI doesn't want to run, I install a very basic Debian. You can actually do this um, with any, even if it's a lighter operating system than Debian, which is one of the lightest, but you know, try CentOS or DSL, damn small Linux, and stuff like that if you can get it working. And all you need to do is install VirtualBox. So here's a headless version of Debian. I installed VirtualBox, and uh, for good measure, even though it's not running, uh, if I want to, I can install XFCE uh, version 4. And so, but the thing is, is that when the computer is running, uh, that GUI is not is is there's no it's not booting to a GUI it's just booting to um, it's just booting to Debian server so I'm not using those resources unless I call on them. So after that you can have and you'll see in some of my previous videos how I've used X11 to call on a an application GUI so I can manage it if I need to. So there's two ways of doing this. You can do this pure command line by creating virtual machines if you need to. Um, and that's located on virtualbox.org in the manual section. Okay, and you'll see VBox Manage. Okay. Um, if you need to, say, uh, start up a VM or to see what VMs are there, you can do something like VBox Manage list VMs and these are the VMs that I have okay and then you can you can start them and stop them from the command line but say you're creating a VM well you can go through the uh, all the commands of creating one and specifying the disk space and everything or using x11 just called VirtualBox and here's the GUI Okay, so again, I'm only using the GUI. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I'm only using the GUI. Uh, however, I can, you know, make make a new VM. Uh, oops, sorry. Okay. 
So I can make, say, test2, make a new VM. And once that's done, I can exit out of that GUI. <clears throat> I can list the VMs, and you see how test2 is there. So I can do list v, uh, VBox manage, start VM, test2. And then it's type headless. Uh, oh, wait. I screwed up that syntax. It's dash dash headless. Okay. So if I go back to the GUI, I see that, oh, virtual box. Two, test two is running. Okay. And if I need to, I can shut it down. I can also shut it down in the GUI as well. Uh, sorry, in the command line, but uh, but you can also do it in the GUI. So what all this means? What this means is that you're not going to get the same per performance with this as a Type One hypervisor like uh, ESSI or something like that. It's not a bare metal install. However, this is the closest that you can get to that um, and have somewhat better performance than having to install, um, you know, all of uh, an entire Windows distribution. Uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, Windows install, Windows distribution. I got, anyways. Um, so, yeah, instead of installing a full-fledged Windows install or uh, a full-fledged Ubuntu install or something like that, Install a very, very basic uh, Linux distribution. Using VirtualBox, you can then control um, these VMs. You can even create virtual machines. Uh, you can change your settings and everything like that. I mean, you can sit here all day and learn all of these um, switches and commands and stuff. But uh, there's nothing wrong with just using the virtual... Um, the X11 forwarding to call on that little GUI for when you're creating virtual machines and making all the settings because that you only do it once and you're sacrificing what a couple maybe about 100 megabytes of RAM uh, and only at the time that you need it versus having this GUI and all this other stuff running that you don't really need. So I hope this helped you out, and I hope this uh, provided some sort of solution for everyone. If you have any questions or comments about this video or any one of my videos, please leave them in the comment section below. You can also email me, sean at seanmancini.com, and don't forget to visit my website, www.seanmancini.com. Have a good day, everyone.